Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 245. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis and I am partially vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, if I'm a little uh, off this evening, it is because uh, some side effects are are hitting. It. They hit me on a delay on a delay. Like it was like I was fine for like 24 hours maybe, um, but now I'm a little bit weird. <laughs> but I just have to celebrate my immune system getting to work. Let's go. Um, yeah, so today's blog is, uh, about some New York politics for, for fun. It's not really fun, is it? I don't know. Um, so I apologize in advance to my international listeners who may not be like deep in the weeds of, uh, I mean, this is not, it's a national story, but it, it, it is about, uh, our governor, Governor Cuomo, uh, who has managed to get himself into the news quite a bit. Um, but this may be a little, you know, I don't know. Is it, is it too local? You tell me. I did write about my assembly members a few months ago, so it's, you never know what's going to hit. It might be just speak to just the same issues where you live, maybe. I don't know. Actually, I, I hope that this isn't true where you live. I hope you have, like, really awesome women who are leading your places, and it's going great. Uh, anyway, here it is. It's called, I guess I have to talk about Cuomo. The governor of New York, where I live, is all over the news again, and as much as I'd really rather not think too much about Governor Andrew Cuomo, I'm seeing so many bonehead responses to this story that I think I'm going to have to say something. I will say, just right off the bat, I am not a fan of him. I have not been a fan. I have voted against him every chance I've gotten. I found him tolerable for the first time when he became a voice of reason in the early pandemic times, but even his reassuring statements about what day of the week it was were not enough to turn me into a Cuomo sexual. I understand why people got crushes on him, but his history of throwing women's reproductive rights under the bus, for example, kept me from any particularly warm feelings. I just didn't hate him as hard while he was telling me it was Tuesday back in April. I've seen him in person when the new subway line opened a few years ago, and I will tell you, he was like a bag of oil in a human suit. I've never seen anyone oilier. And I was once the person a drunk Kevin Spacey needed help from. I think Cuomo's been a lousy governor. It's not just the absolute disregard for accountability or a compassion for the folks living and working in nursing homes during the pandemic, though I find that stomach-turningly reprehensible. I am not a fan of his alignment with real estate interests, always, but in the last year especially, when he killed all chances for the cancel rent movement to give a bit of relief to suffering unemployed and underemployed people. His association with the IDC was another real blot on his leadership, if you need more reasons, I highly suggest this article from Rebecca Traster about the climate in his office and how it prevented actual governing getting done, or the article from Teen Vogue last spring about why he shouldn't be your pandemic crush, or this other one from The Guardian about why he's a mini-Trump. So I'll acknowledge that I've been ready for this bag of oil to go for some time. Then the first story about his sexual harassment of his employee came out. Again, it came out a few months ago on Twitter, but I guess no one cared then. This time, his former employee wrote a piece about it herself, and it hit. It's the kind of story that is so common that it allows a lot of people to dismiss it. It's the kind of story that if it happens to you, it's a total misery. And when you tell people, they'll either tell you it was no big deal or want you to report it. 
It's been so recently normal for dirtbag men to behave that way that scores of people line up to dismiss it. Who hasn't been harassed like that, they say. What's the big deal? And then they say the one that's been driving me craziest. If we aren't going to prosecute Trump for his pussy grabbing, we shouldn't worry about Cuomo's harmless flirtations. And this, my friends, is why Trump getting away with the 22 rapes and multitudes of sexual assaults should have been prosecuted years ago. The bar is now so low that no one could possibly suffer consequences for any reprehensible behavior. Is Cuomo as bad as Trump? No. But Trump is really terrible. You'd have to be really, really bad to be as bad as him. Though I did just listen to a podcast about a guy who was even worse than Trump in this department. I mean, it seems there's always someone who was worse and got away with it, something for longer. To me, it sounds like, how can we hold this guy accountable for stabbing his buddy when that other serial murderer down in Florida got away with killing so many people? It's just a little bad behavior. It's classic whataboutism, really. Is this one story about Cuomo being a really terrible horn dog boss enough to take him down? Unfortunately, no. But the behavior that was described by Lindsay Boylan is such that it was obvious that there would be more. Long before anyone else came forward, we knew there would be more women with similar stories because this sort of behavior is a pattern and it reflects a general disregard for women. Also, one brave woman tends to lead to more brave women willing to come forward. So I certainly expected more to appear, and more certainly did. When I wrote this, there were two more. As I type this, there are five more. Who knows how many more will emerge by the time I push publish. There are at least eight, by the way, now. But for people who love Cuomo, it doesn't seem too bad. They'd like for him to flirt with them. They wish Cuomo would put his hand on their lower back and then grab their faces and ask if he could kiss them. That sounds nice to them. They'd definitely say yes to that request. It's like if George Clooney slid up to them at a party and offered to take them home. It's sexy for them. But for women who reported these incidents, it was not sexy. It was entirely unwanted. And in at least two cases, it was further complicated by his ability to fire them or ruin their job prospects. For these women, it's not like their boss is George Clooney and they feel lucky to be the focus of his attentions. It's like their boss is George Costanza. Also, I would for sure rather be hit on by George Costanza than Andrew Cuomo. I know how to push off the Costanzas of the world. Cuomo would be a lot harder to escape. The problem is not that Cuomo just got a little too flirty at some parties or his job. The problem is that he has demonstrated a lack of respect for women, for women's bodies, for women's boundaries, and their agency. He has demonstrated by his behavior with the women who have reported that he has little respect for half the population of the state he governs. This isn't some leftist plot to treat liberal politicians with more stringent guidelines. Also, it turns out he's actually terrible to everyone, not just women. He's just terrible to women in particularly sexist ways. This kind of behavior is a clear indication of his lack of ability to govern with discernment and care. That lack of care has been clear to me and so many others for some time, but for some, this is the first time they're getting the picture. In regards to his failures around the nursing homes last year, he said, but who cares? 33, 28, died in the hospital, died in the nursing home. They died. Honestly, he should resign off the back of that wretched statement alone, but if it's the sexual harassment that gets him, that's good too. There are reasons to put a check on this behavior, even on politicians we like. If it turns out that Elizabeth Warren, who I admire greatly, was out there abusing her power with her staffers, I'd be very surprised, of course, as it would be very far outside her character, but 
I'd expect her to resign as well. This isn't about who we like and don't like. The thing is, if there are no consequences, then the behavior just continues. And it usually gets worse since the harasser feels a sense of impunity. If you want to hear a chilling example of this, I recommend listening to the series Women in the Room, which explored sexual harassment in New York politics in years previous. The story of Vito Lopez's office was particularly horrifying. He was once my representative, too, back when I lived in Brooklyn. When he first faced accusations, he was, metaphorically, given a pat on the back and told not to do it anymore. This emboldened him to make even more overt demands of the new women in his employ. In his wake, a slew of women who had wanted a career in politics but had it harassed out of them by a guy who just enjoyed a little flirtation, who just needed a little support, as he put it, a little massage, some company in his lonely hotel room. No need to worry that saying no will lose you your job and any future in politics you might be looking for. It will definitely do that. And then some. Cuomo needs to see some consequences to his actions because all of those who are harassing below him need to see those consequences. We need to ensure that Cuomo experiences consequences because he will be the reason someone else won't be accountable for their terrible behavior. In the same way that Trump not experiencing any consequences from the rapes of 22 women and girls is allowing many a bozo to justify not holding Cuomo accountable for sexual harassment. A woman is the lieutenant governor and would finish out Cuomo's term. New York has never had a woman governor. If we'd like to show New York's women some respect, Cuomo should resign. If he won't resign, which it looks like he won't, then we need to impeach him. I, for one, would be very relieved not to have a sentient bag of oil for our governor anymore. And now for some extra bonus podcast content references from the blog uh, that I will explain. Number one, uh, why did Kevin Spacey need my help? Because I was working at front of house at a show in London. Uh, it was Punch Drunk's Mask of the Red Death. And in the show, um, there was a bar that you could hang out in during the show. But once the show was over, the bar was closed. So Kevin Spacey left his coat in the bar, and I was the person who needed to find it for him. But he was drunk. <laughs> and very charming, I will say. He was a really charming fellow, but uh, but yes, he, he needed his coat, so he, he turned it up, <laughs> and I found it very amusing. Uh, other references, the, the podcast about the really super terrible sexual predator, uh, is called evil by design. And it is about, um, this Canadian fashion mogul, I guess. Can we call him a mogul? Nygaard is his name. Um, this man, according to many a person interviewed in the podcast is the worst serial predator that they have ever seen. He's worse than Epstein. It's really bad. I mean, it's really bad. I don't know I, why, why I listened to it. I'm not entirely sure. But it is actually fascinating to hear how he got away with it in a way. I mean, it's horrible. But you understand, like, all these systemic things that, you know, he was able to control. Anyway, that so it's um by the CBC and they're they're pretty good at making podcasts. So if you want to hear about a really just genuinely terrible person, evil by design, and then the politics New York politics podcast, um, it was actually a little tricky to find. I I only heard about it because the woman who's one of the reporters on it tweeted out, "Oh hey guys, check out our you know um, women in the room series." And uh, I, it actually took me a little minute to find it. Um, 
but it is part of a, a bigger pod. The, the whole podcast is called Prickly Politics, and the series about New York. You, it's not obvious, like in the in the feed. Uh, I can't remember what the first episode is called. But if you need help, let ask me, and I'll tell you what the first episode is called. Um, but it is actually really, it's. I mean, you know, you think you know things, and then you you discover like just like how much, how much just terrible stuff people get up to. Uh, anyway, those are those are some things. If any of those things are interesting to you, also uh, I cannot recommend highly enough. Rebecca Traster's article about Cuomo, if you want to read more about uh, his misdeeds. Um, that is in New York Magazine and the most recent. Um, I don't I don't it, I have not yet received my print copy, so I don't, I don't know if it's actually in the print copy, but um, it's on it's on the on the New York Magazine website. So check that out if that's of interest to you. I mean, it's a, it's a corker. Sure is. So what song will it be? Well, I had two options going for a little while, uh, and I settled on, uh, you're no good because Cuomo is a no good. Uh, and there's something about, um, I, I think like one of some something that people find appealing about him is this kind of like blustery like bad boy persona. So I I feel like there's something in, about that in the song like where you could turn where you can realize like oh I had a crush on him in the sp- you know in the spring when he was a hero and now I realize he's no good because he's really no good in my opinion. And many others. <laughs> uh, so very shortly you will hear uh, You're No Good, Linda Ronstadt's You're No Good. Um, and meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. Um, if you would like to support the podcast, uh, please tell someone about it. That's a great way. Share on the social media is also great. Uh, supporting it with money is amazing. Uh, Patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis, Kofi, PayPal. All those links are in the show notes. And, um, yeah. So here for you is uh, You're No Good on ukulele. And uh, enjoy.
Baby.